So guys, welcome back into the second kind of second part, second episode of British Army personal equipment. Um, this one, of course, as you can kind of tell, it looks at the uh, the First World War, the, the Great War. Um, <clears throat> so the British Army coming into 1914 was had similar sort of items coming in. You know how when they came into the Boer War in the kind of 1890s. Um, of course, the British Army still had the, the hold all and the the, um, the housewife sewing kit. Still had all those with its accoutrements inside. Um, but in 1905, the British Army adopts the 1905 pattern clasp knife. This technically is a. A minute. Uh, this one technically is a 1939 dated one. Focus. Yeah, so this is technically a 1939 dated one, but it's of, so basically 19, by 1941 the British Army had um, shortened the knives to about, to about there, so they're not too bulky and heavy, but this is basically the 1905 pattern type. Uh, so that's what the British infantrymen, uh, their kind of their personal, technically not personal as things like housewife sewing kit and things like that, but personal as things of, it's their own, uh, which given to them, type of thing. Yeah, um, what is incredibly personal to a British infantryman is this. This is his dog tag. Now, originally, oh sorry, now originally, um, during the Boer War, the dog tags were in in um, in basically just well, not his dog tags, mainly his service records. Uh, about the guy weren't actually attached to him really in any way. It was mainly just um, basically documents that the British Army kind of had in, in records of him. Um, but by uh, 1905, 1906, the British Army had come up with um, what was called, officially called a dog tag, because it's like a tag around a dog, uh, which was in metal, uh, kind of tin, tin type metal, which of course had blood group, regiment, and a uh, name of course and and all and everything that but of course but by 1916 they actually found out that when bullets you know hit into them or something else happens like an explosion or something those metal shards would actually go into the body and cause more damage so in 1916 they came out with this the kind of f fiber type now again it would have this guy um Pardon me. So, if it focus, it has so Christian name. So I think John. I think the guy was from yeah John. And then it has the guy's surname, um, rifle brigade. Then uh, anything. Then it's service number and things like that. Uh, so how this would have worked is if the guy was killed in action, um, they would unhook, have all this so uh, it's connected to your um, your um, oh your uh, neck. Basically, um, yeah, it'll be wrapped around your neck, uh, like basically a chain. Uh, the red, kind of reddy colour, would be taken off when the guy dies. This this reddy bit, they separate this. This red bit will come up um, and be taken back to military records, and then this one will be put uh, basically on the body for um, and kept with the body for uh, what's the word for. Uh, recognizing the guy who is dead, of course. So you see what he's saying. Because before 1916, uh, when these weren't really a thing, the ID discs were just metal. If that's destroyed, that's the only re really kind of way of knowing, uh, of of really kind of knowing um, the person. Um, if, which I don't have it, uh, if they didn't have their AB or their army book. 64, which is their service document, pay book in a way, um, on their top right hand pocket, uh, which they had in their top right hand pocket, on uh, not normally actually when they're fighting, but normally it's on them. Uh, but of course, if they don't that if they don't have that on, and of course these dog tags will be on them at all times and will help. So yeah, um, next one, which will be in your holdall normally, would be your brass button stick to basically. Oh, I haven't got a button actually here, so uh, basically say this is a button, Oops, say this is a button, you'll put the button through there, then you'll get your brasso or your 
spit and polish and just polish the button. Yeah, that's what these are used for. Uh, that's a kind of first world war example. Um, originally, there would have been basically uh, pattern numbers and things on there, but it basically the guys just completely shined it right through. Um, it would have been up there or sometimes on the other side. But yeah, that's that. Um, um, then what every soldier got, the Active Service Testament, 1914, it's a Bible, because everybody in the British Army, if you weren't religious, you were still cast, classed as religious, so you would get an Active Service Testament. Uh, they followed this through to a 1939 um, version, act, the Active Service New Testament, 1939, this is the 14 version. Sometimes you get them all uh, kind of name and service number and and battalion and regiment and everything in there, but sadly not. This is just kind of a clean, possibly unissued edition actor service testament. Yeah. Uh, now this thing, this here, is a another thing that would have been carried um, in the kind of it wouldn't be carried in the uh, haversack, but in the large pack, it would have most probably been carried. Um, or if it wasn't carried in there, it would have been back at the back, which is more likely. Uh, looking at the big hefty of this thing, it is a British Army uh, boot um, polisher. It is falling apart, sadly. Um, and this one, actually particularly, which I've got down the details, actually has a guy's name inscribed in there, if I can find it. Oh, where's it, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Oh. Is, it, is it in here? It is here. Oh, here it is. Yeah, here it is. You probably won't be able to see in the light at all, but you can just see it. It's um, I think it's saying J, not J, a, um, J Higgins or something like that. But he was in the um, the I can't remember what was in that what was he in. I think he's I can't remember what regiment, but yeah, that's basically belongs to him. Uh, so yeah, First World War British Army boot polisher. Um, this one. This was actually a very lucky found find for. Fifteen pounds at a um, antique shop. Years, about a year ago, this was. Um, so yeah, you can see uh, Birmingham and nineteen. Oh, focus. And nineteen. Oh, well, nineteen fifteen. There, dated. So it is. Sadly, it is coming apart a bit. You can kind of see. But yeah, that's that. Um, and oh, and the and that was like inside it is coming apart. Yeah. Um, now originally in this there would have been two of these, one up, one like that, and then the other one um, basically would be that way round, and they would have been kind of pushed together, and there would have been two inside this originally. Um, but yeah, and there are a bit of hair stuff just kind of all coming off it sadly but um so yeah so that um what else what else um apart from that of course you know like in the like in the boar war they would have had photographs of, of loved ones and a lot of wives and and you know other and mums and dads and family members and all that um but essentially that is kind of what they had in their um their um, you know, personal, not personal equipment like rifle and bayonet and such, but personal um, kit such as either uh, photos you'd bring or personal to themselves, you know, like the diary and dog tags, which these dog tags, five ones, came in 1916. Um, um, there would also, of course, the mess tins, the uh, D-shaped aluminium mess tins were adopted in about 19... 10 roughly, um, roughly 19, yeah, about 1910. Uh, of course, they would have those as well. And then, of course, the rations. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this has been a little quick, of course, episode 3 of the British Army personal equipment of the, the Great War and the First World War. And um, so, yeah, um, um, I'll see you in the next part or installment of the British Army personal equipment of the Second World War. Um, but me, thanks for watching guys, have a good one, and see ya, bye!